You know, it'd be interesting to know what Hello Kitty sounds like. Because I noticed that the Hello Kitty units don't have any voice awakenings. So what would she sound like? Oh no. Paradise Punch Lemonade. It is fucking minging. Suck your dad. Okay, okay, never mind. We don't need voice lines. Hello everyone, and welcome to another review video. Today I'll be taking a look at the Sanyo collab and what it's got to offer. Spoiler alert, it's not that much. This returning collab brought a handful of really strong equips and two good rainbow units, but that's about it. This mission will be split into two runs, where the new orb skin will be in the lineup in week 1 and the new BGM unit will be available on week 2, but these will be at 1% each, and there's 39 other units in the rem, so the chances of pulling these two bundle units are not that good, and we don't even have the luxury of having these two units in the same lineup. Of the other 39 units, only a handful are useful, and also there's no new units you can exchange for. So right off the bat, I don't think it's a good idea to pull in Sanrio. But let's take a look at all the units, and maybe there's something that catches your eye and might persuade you to pull. But remember, there's much better machines down the line. Demon Slayer and Hunter x Hunter are good machines in the near future, and also some of the Chain Salmon units are okay. Also, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy these type of videos. Okay. Let's start with the speedrun. Bad Bats and Pochaco are really useless. Although Bad Bats has two enhanced killers, there's a farmable alternative that has three. Hangyadon and Little Twin Stars are also pretty useless. Although they can actually do some damage, they have really bad actives. Hello Kitty and My Melody are also really useless. They don't offer any utility or bring any damage to the table. Keropi is very similar to the last two, but at least his equip can be useful, as it gives you an unbindable, two team HPs, and a cloud resist. Cinnamon Roll's equip is also decent, and it could be used on something like Shiva Dragon, although for Colosseums nowadays, you're not allowed to bring in assists, so this is not as valuable as it could have been back in the day. If you don't care about the active, Pom Pom Porin has a better equip than Daywolf, as he has two more light OEs. Kuromi's equip is similar to Mebius Brace. You lose out on a skill boost, but you gain four dark OEs. Kuretao has many different EVOs, but the best one is the Odin version as he has 4 skill boosts and he could do some damage in a light PDP team. Kirimi-chan is not that useful anymore, as a Mayumi system gives you a butter break without cutting your HP, and it also has a slightly higher damage ceiling. The Gaddis Hello Kitty equip is actually really decent, as it has up to 2 effective skill boosts, and the Valkyrie CL evolution actually has a lot of utility and it could do some damage. It also serves as a decent cleric with her active that also gives you a shield and voids attribute absorption. Charmy Kitty has a lot of evolutions, but most of them are not that good, except maybe the last two, as I do recall using them at some point. Kogimune is very underwhelming for a Norskin unit, as the equip doesn't really stand out and he has a pretty bad active. Remu Kitty does an insane amount of damage in a red PDP team, but unfortunately her active doesn't give you a time buff to fish out red orbs from the roulette. She is exchangeable though, but I don't think she brings that much to a team, as her active is very underwhelming. Last year there was a good amount of hype for Norsa Kitty, as she was useful for farming the special Colosseum, but I think after her buff, she can't do more than that. She still only has 2 breaks and you need 3 copies to make a system with a friend. She's also exchangeable, but I don't think that's a good idea. Sailing Kitty is one of the few units with 3 dungeon boosts and 2 skill boosts. You can also create a system with 4 copies of her, but you can't really tackle that many dungeons. Back in the day she was decent for farming TA3, but just like with Norsa Kitty, I don't think she can handle any newer dungeons. But her base form is decent for button farming, just because of those 3 dungeon boosts. And it's the same case with Reach Kitty and Madu Kitty, as they also have 3 dungeon boosts and 2 skill boosts. Although they have a slightly higher cooldown, so Sailing Kitty is better in that aspect. And that does it for the speedrun. Now let me take a look at the more worthwhile units in this machine. There's a lot of units in this part of the video, since I decided to include all the new units since they are, well, new. First is Daytona Kuromi, who has a decent damage multiplier and has an OK Pierce active that also allows them to raise their damage cap, which they might not be reliably hitting in super gravity dungeons. But still, this is a decent light TPA unit with a Pierce active. They also have an unconditional 25x leader scale, which is interesting, but most likely useless. Next is Ideal Cinnamon, who is a BGM unit that's very underwhelming in both of her forms. I feel like her active is all over the place. The cooldown is way too long to be reliably used as a board change. It's also too long as a void attribute and damage absorption active, 
as similar actives that last for two turns are on seven turn cooldown, and the one turn delay might not be useful in many cases. The A star form has a lot more utility, and this is the form I would probably use, but probably not. Next is Koro Koro Kuririn. The equip itself is not that special, but as a sub, it's actually pretty decent for a green BDP team, as it has a cleric active and also a damage spike. Next is Ahiruno Pekel, who has a pretty unique equip, with double killers and three team RCBs. The active is not that useful, but those awakenings could come really handy in a team that struggles with healing. As a unit, he could be a decent cleric, but I feel like blue has much better options out there. Next is My Sweet Piano. The equip has decent awakenings, but the active is not that good. And as a sub, it has decent utility with those team HVs and has a decent pierce active. And with two attributes and a possible double L, it could take the assist removal recovery latent. Next is Nettles Carol 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 P, who has a very respectable damage multiplier and could be a pretty decent cleric in green BDP teams. And as an added bonus, it comes with a pretty useful board change. Next is LJ Kitty who was the unit of choice for tackling the MD4 title challenge, and she has been limited to non-super gravity dungeons ever since, but that has changed after her buff since she now has a levity awakening, so she has a respectable damage multiplier. Still, because of her lyric skill and her low HP, she's not that well suited to deal with the newer dungeons. Next is Blackbird Bat Bat That's Maru, who's a fairly strong dark PDP unit, Unfortunately, I haven't seen that many people using him, most likely because people opt in to use better dark and hard generators, and that's all he brings to the table with his active. Next is Aura Kitty, who has the only equip with two heal TBAs and one skill boost, and on top of that, with her active, she has effectively three skill boosts. As a unit, she's a decent cleric with a decent damage multiplier, but she kinda suffers from being a triple attribute unit, since you can't limit breaker. And since she doesn't have a high enough damage multiplier, her third attribute won't be doing that much damage. Next is Seawolf Pochaco, who is a really decent red and blue unit. It has a pretty useful active, and it can deal with assist recovery removal. Although this unit might not see much use, since who knows if we'll get this unit from Marvel. But regardless of that, this is still a pretty strong unit. Next is Wish Me Mel, who is a pretty decent looping shield option that comes with heal TPAs and a double L. It has low HP and it doesn't do a lot of damage, but the attack boost from her active can help your other subs deal way more damage. Next is Nell Kitty, who's pretty much just a big damage stick, and with her damage cap breaking active, she can deal up to 16 billion damage. Outside of that, she doesn't really do much else. Her active also boosts damage absorption, but a lot of times you also want an active that also deals with attribute absorption. Next is Fasca Kitty who's a pretty good full cleric that also has a double L and a double cross. Her active also adds 5 combos, which could come in really handy at times. Next is Zella Kitty, who's the only unit out there with 3 dungeon boosts and 4 skill boosts. The only better unit out there is Camilla, who has 4 dungeon boosts with 4 skill boosts. Her Evo doesn't really offer much, but this could be a really good trade if you don't have any copies of Camilla. Next is Veroa Kitty, who also has 3 dungeon boosts, but only two skill boosts, but her little skill boosts egg drop by a little bit, and there's only a few units out there that have similar little skills. As it was with Sila, her Evo doesn't really do much. Veroa Kitty will be my top trade option, and then maybe followed by Sila Kitty. Next is Kuromi the Great King, who's the brand new BGM unit. He has a pretty high damage multiplier, a high HP stat, and it also has a damage cap breaking active, although I wish it was higher. But maybe 4 billion is enough, since he has a defense break awakening. Kuromi also has a pretty decent leader skill that adds combos, has Fua, and has 5 effective HP. But even though this is a really strong card, I don't think he's worth the chase or the $30. I mainly feel this way because I know there's better rainbow units coming, and with it, I should get one early for Christmas. Next is Good Day Hello Kitty, who's a really strong equip as he has 3 effective skill boosts, 2 team HPs, and 2 killer awakenings. I'm not quite sure how valuable the balanced killer is, but I know for sure the dragon killer is really good. The monster evolution suffers from the same problems that Aura Kitty has, but I place this unit highly because of the equip. Next is Tuxedo Sam. The base form has decent utility with 3 team HPs and a possible double L super awakening, but most people in JP are using Sophie Sam as it has a lot more utility with the jammer assist, the double air for assist removal, and the three hard OE plus awakenings. 
people in JP were using Sophie Sam in Muichiro teams for his healing potential and for his active, as attack and RCB debuffs are becoming a little bit more commonplace in JP as of late. But a lot of people nowadays are not using Sophie Sam as much in Muichiro teams since the recent addition of New Year's Watatsumi. Since Muichiro will be paired with Watatsumi, and Watatsumi already takes care of attribute and damage absorption. And since we'll get the New Year's RAM later this month, NA will get access to New Year Watatsumi months before we get access to Muichiro himself. So NA won't go through that awkward period without New Year Watatsumi, so Sophie Sam probably won't be used that much in Muichiro teams when NA gets him. Still, outside Muichiro teams, Sophie Sam right now is a really strong card. And since he's not a new addition to the RAM, you might have one laying around and won't have to roll for him. Next is the new orb skin, Raffin Kitty, who's a really strong rainbow unit. Just like the Kuromi VGM card, Raffin Kitty also has 5 effective HP, but by having 3 attributes and 2 crosses, this card has more utility and a much better active. She will also pair really well with Akasa in the future when the Demon Slayer collab returns. But in the meantime, she's a decent leader and a really strong rainbow sock. And finally, Goodnight Hello Kitty. This is an insane equip that I see being used all the time, as it gives you some bulk, two effective skill boosts, a 10c, and a full blind resist. A similar equip to this is Halloween Kiora's equip. That equip also gives you a 2 turn charge, it has one more team HP, and instead of a blind resist, it has a cloud resist. But I think everyone agrees that a full blind resist is much, much better than a cloud resist. So this equip is insanely good. The Noctaria Kitty is better than the Metherit and Aura Kitties, since you can create a system with four of them, but I wouldn't really try to go for four of them. I'd be happy with just one in the equip form. So yeah, I'm not pulling in Sanrio. I'm not sure how many free rolls will get this time around, but since I don't have a copy from previous runs, I'll just be hoping I get a free Tuxedo Sam. I'm not greedy enough to ask for a free Good night, Hello Kitty, but I'll gladly take one, Gung Ho. That does it for this video, and I wish you luck if you decide to pull on this machine, but again, I wouldn't really do it and try to save for Demon Slayer. To pull for Muichiro, since you'll need two or more copies of him, and he's got a 1% pull rate. Thank you for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe for more PAD videos. Goodbye.